What if the deadliest drones terrorizing cities uh, aren't quite as invincible as we've been led to believe? What if Ukraine has a secret weapon, something that could actually change the game in aerial defense? Prepare to have your perceptions shattered. Welcome to J&J's Military Report. Where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. Yep. From fighter jets to power shifts, we break down the stories shaping the future of warfare. Okay, let's dive right in, because today we've got a bombshell announcement coming straight from Ukraine's presidential office. Hmm. The core claim. Ukraine actually possesses interceptor drones. And these aren't just any drones. They're specifically designed to destroy those jet-propelled shawheads. That's right. A really significant development. Absolutely. Given how much these shawheads have impacted civilian areas, this is... Well, potentially huge. It is. And Pavel Polisa, he's the deputy head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, was very clear about it. He explicitly stated, and I'm quoting him here, we also have interceptor drones that are capable of fighting shyheads with jet engines. Wow. So not a future plan, but something they have now. Exactly. It's a declaration of an existing capability. Mm -hmm. And uh, Polisa really emphasized how the conflict is constantly evolving. He said Ukraine is making progress. We have no alternative. No alternative. That really hits home, doesn't it? The pressure must be immense. It underscores this constant high stakes technological race. I mean, just to keep up, they have to innovate constantly because, you know, the other side is too. So could this be the critical turning point? I mean, for protecting civilian areas from these devastating aerial attacks? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Okay, but let's unpack this a bit. It sounds amazing, but Polisa did add a note of caution, didn't he? Something about effectiveness varying. He did, yes. He acknowledged that these interceptor drones show different effectiveness. So it's not like a magic bullet solution across the board. Right. Performance depends on several things. He specifically mentioned uh, the drone model itself, how well the crew is trained, and naturally, the weather conditions at the time. Okay, that makes sense. So different models might have different speeds, ranges, sensors. Precisely. Some might be nimbler for close-in work, others better for longer ranges, but maybe less agile. And then crew training, that's absolutely critical. You can have the best gear, but if the operator isn't top-notch. Exactly. It's about quick identification, targeting under pressure, understanding the whole aerial picture. It's complex. And weather, of course. Fog, heavy rain, strong winds that can mess with sensors and just make flying harder for everyone involved. Definitely. It impacts sensors, flight stability, all of it. So mm -hmm. it, it's a powerful new tool, but it operates in the real world with real limitations. Okay, so understanding it's not just one super drone changes things. It sounds like this is part of a much bigger picture, a broader strategy. It's not just about this one type of interceptor, is it? No, absolutely not. This ties directly into Ukraine's strategic goal which police had described as building an optimal layered system at different ranges and altitudes. The layered system, okay, like defense in depth. Exactly like that. Think of it as multiple nets stacked. You have long range detection maybe, then medium range missiles like NASAMs or Patriots for bigger, faster threats, way up high. Right. Then as threats get closer or lower, maybe you have other systems, mobile units, man pads even. And then for those close in threats, especially drones like the Shaheds, that's where these interceptor drones fit in or maybe other point defense weapons. So the idea is to create multiple chances to stop an attack. Yes, redundancy and resilience. It's designed specifically to handle mass aerial threats like drone swarms or coordinated attacks. The goal is to prevent any single layer from getting overwhelmed. If something slips through one layer, the next one is ready. It makes it much harder and costlier for an attacker to succeed. That sounds incredibly complex to manage in real time. It is. It requires sophisticated command and control, but it's really fundamental to effective modern air defense. But wait, there's a fascinating twist to these jet-propelled shaheads that might surprise you. Here's where it gets really interesting. So let's talk about the threat itself first. These jet-propelled shaheds, I mean, they're no joke. We've seen the reports, the damage in Ukrainian cities. They represent a serious danger. Faster, maybe harder to track. That's the general perception, yes. Faster equals harder to stop. Yeah. It seems logical. By sense of bet coming. Well, yes. There's this counterintuitive insight from an aviation expert, Valery Romanenko. He was speaking on RBC Ukraine's YouTube channel, and he argued that these jet shaheds are... Uh, not invulnerable. Okay, not invulnerable. That's interesting. That may be not shocking. Nothing's truly invulnerable. True, but here's the kicker. Romanenko actually stated that in some specific cases, these advanced jet-propelled shawheads are even easier to destroy than conventional ones. Oh, wait. 
easier. How does that work? They're supposed to be the upgrade. Exactly. It flips the script, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, the source didn't detail all the technical reasons why, but we can speculate a bit based on, you know, general principles. Okay, let's hear it. Well, think about it. A jet engine is usually bigger than a propeller engine, right? So the drone itself might be physically larger. Making it easier to spot on radar. Potentially, yes. Bigger radar cross-section. And then there's heat. Jet engines put out a lot more heat than props. Ah, so infrared systems, heat-seeking missiles, they might lock onto them more easily, even at night or in bad weather. That's a very strong possibility. A much bigger thermal signature could be a major vulnerability. Also, while they're faster straight ahead, they might be less agile, maybe a wider turning circle. So less maneuverable if you need to dodge. Could be. If their flight path becomes more predictable because of that speed or size, paradoxically, that could make them an easier target once you've actually detected and locked on. Huh. Never thought of it that way. Any other thoughts? Just maybe the cost and complexity factor. Jets are more expensive. Maybe they can't launch as many at once compared to the cheaper prop versions. So less of a swarm threat, potentially easier for defenses to handle the numbers. It's that classic military tech thing. An improvement in one area, like speed, might create a weakness somewhere else. An Achilles heel introduced by the upgrade itself. Fascinating. Even easier to destroy than conventional ones. That really does make you think, doesn't it? It challenges how we view advanced versus effective. It really does. So what does this all mean for the future of drone warfare and countermeasures? Are we witnessing this incredibly rapid cat and mouse evolution where the advantage can shift like faster than ever before? It certainly seems that way. The pace of adaptation on both sides is remarkable. Does this kind of rapid innovation, finding weaknesses in supposedly superior tech, maybe favor agility and clever tactics over just having the biggest, most expensive arsenal? What are your thoughts on that? Let us know. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.